Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, when in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put on important news. For those inv investors out there, small cap investors that are looking for renewable energy companies, but you don't want to flip the coin on boom or bust because you know a lot of these small cap companies are betting on one thing that might hit. If it doesn't, it's all over. You're going to love this interview with Alkaline Fuel Cell Power. Why? Because the company's got three plans in this business. One, it's current business, which is a traditional heat and power with over $50 million in pipeline of potential contracts. So that provides a stability. Two, the company's got a near-term B2B plan, which essentially are fuel cell generators for backup and off-grid applications, which is ideal for diesel generator customers needing to eliminate emissions. So there, you're talking about revenue opportunities that are going to be readily available. And then three, which is what investors want also, is the long-term home run potential. And we love this one. It's their hydrogen-powered fuel cell for the consumer market, B2C. In fact, this microheat and power solution is going to rival Tesla's Powerwall uh, to power people at home. And in fact, according to the company and their deck, we talked about in the last interview, significant competitive advantages against Tesla's Powerwall. But today, we're talking about three press releases, the big one an LOI for joint venture with Ampower. What is that for? For fuel cell generator pilot using green ammonia. What does that mean? Frank, welcome back, my friend. Thank you very much, George. Great to be here. So talk to us about, you know, this JV with Ampower. What does the ammonia do versus the hydrogen power part? So it's a great question, uh, and I don't want to bore people because it can get very technical, but green ammonia to power is exactly what we're doing here. So our fuel cells require hydrogen, but it doesn't have to be hydrogen until we physically need it at that point that we need it. So if you store it in uh, a green ammonia on your site, just like a diesel generator, you have, say, a green ammonia stored, um, the green ammonia is converted. There's a cracking technology that we've partnered with it's converted to hydrogen in real time as we need it. And why, you know, nice. why we pick ammonia. So the ammonia, globally, it's great to transport. There's already transportation uh, um, uh, systems, logistics. Ammonia is, it can be stored at room temperature. Uh, and, and for our purposes, it's, you know, over five times the density of hydrogen on site. So I need that five times that, that power, I need that. Um, for when my hydrogen fuel cell needs it, but I don't want the storage size of that. So green ammonia allows me to ship it to my right. site, hold it, you know, you know, just put in perspective. So everyone can get this, right? You know what your house needs in power. An average house, you know, for let's say to run it for 24 hours, uh, we're talking about, you know, a, a few kilograms of hydrogen. So what does it look like? Imagine a cubic meter. So imagine a cubic meter of ammonia storage on your property. Cubic meter is, is nothing. Imagine a cubic meter of storage on your property. That cubic meter of ammonia converted to hydrogen for our purposes will give you, okay, so if that was full for in that capacity, about 120 kilograms, that would give you the equivalent of um, 20 days of power straight if you wanted to use that. So I want to give you a sense of that little cubic meter of ammonia that gets converted into about 120 kilograms of hydrogen will give you 20 days worth of full power at 24 hours. And, and, and so to be clear, no one needs that, but I want to give you the sense of uh, all of our applications, backup power, peaking plants, you know, a campus off grid, you know, we can put some ammonia storage on site. It's, it's one fifth of the size of what would have been hydrogen tanks and we can have it ready for you. So that's what we uh, did today. So that was awesome because you didn't bore anybody. In fact, that was non-scientific, but very, very helpful. The second part is, Help out people at home from a practical point of view. Yeah. How am I deploying them? I said, George, am I putting on my chemist uh, goggles? Yeah. <laughs> and so they're mixing yeah. green ammonia or, or is it uh, somehow done automatically assuming the JV and the yeah. uh, goes well? So, you know, remember there's, there's really, you know, there's four ways you can get hydrogen to our fuel cell. One is, and it's more happening quickly in Europe, is they're already converting pipelines to hydrogen, pure hydrogen. Right. So that's easy. When the hydrogen gets to your house, kind of like when natural gas gets to your house here, you turn on your equipment, you won't notice a difference and our fuel cell will operate. In North America, we are trying to be really strategic about the quicker we could find ways of getting hydrogen to an end customer, the quicker we get our sales. And that's what every investor wants to see is sales. Um, so here we've already announced a pilot and we're working on with uh, another technology 
that is a hydrogen separator technology can take hydrogen, say 20% blended hydrogen in a natural gas pipeline. It can extract it at your property and you can use the hydrogen for your fuel cell. But that then requires natural gas companies to be involved in wanting to inject it. So that's one thing. you want to have to be beholden to them, right? I mean, you know what? We want, we want to make sure we get our hydrogen to market so we can sell our fuel cells. So that's one avenue. Another avenue would be, uh, you know, will it be economic in the near term to put uh, your own, uh, you know, hydrogen generating technologies, right? So electrolyzers, your renewables and electrolyzer on your own site to make your own hydrogen. I think that will eventually be the case, uh, say for a property as opposed to a massive farm. Um, and until that happens, and that's another way to get hydrogen to your home or to your business. So we'll wait for that. The other way is, well, look at ammonia. Ammonia is already, you can convert hydrogen to ammonia very easily, and then you convert it back as you need it. The key to it is it's one fifth the size when you store it, and then you can store it at room temperature. Uh, and, you know, so the equivalent, it's one fifth the equivalent uh, at the same pressure. So it's a great solution for a lot of our midterm strategy, right? Of how do we get our fuel cell generators to market? As soon as we have a much smaller footprint of an ammonia storage unit and the cracker that comes with it, we're now ready to sell our fuel cells to people, construction sites who want to be able to do this. And so that, that's the exciting part. We're testing how you can literally have this green ammonia to power package. And we definitely have um, the, the alkaline fuel cell component of it. There, there is one other thing uh, that is why we're different compared to other fuel cells that can easily do this with ammonia. Um, other fuel cells like PEM fuel cells, you know, Loop, uh, Ballard, all these guys, um, they require very, you know, extreme purity of hydrogen. So that conversion in the cracking technology, converted to hydrogen, has to be, you know, close to 100%. Ours allows for a much larger amount of ammonia that can stay in the hydrogen conversion. Um, so it doesn't, you don't have to spend so much money on the overall conversion. You know, it doesn't have to be so purified and that's just savings in the system. So we take a lot more ammonia in that conversion, which allows us to be a great partner uh, for this ammonia cracking company. So you're like back to the future, the DeLorean went the end day, they just need to feed. Yeah, it's, but it's the present, back to the future, but it's the present. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Now, how long this JV how long and how long will this take place testing and so on and so forth to find out if you've really yeah, got this? So, so both our pilots that we've already announced are with the technologies and we're now in the midst of finding the actual sites and, and this additional partners that we will test them on and at. Um, and we're in the process of that. So I think the expectation is these, these would be sort of, you know, Q2, most likely Q3. Uh, rollouts next year and all the different application permits, all the different funding that we need to do to get them done. So this would be a, probably a second half of 2023 rollout of these uh, pilots, but you know we're all in sync. We all understand um, to get that done and, and we are in discussions. We've already loaded up some interesting parties who want to deploy it. So we'll, we'll get that inked in the coming weeks and months. I'm assuming you guys have got a high level of confidence. You're not just throwing something. You're not, you're not just throwing spaghetti, spaghetti at the wall and see if it sticks. You've got a pretty so, high level of confidence that this is going to work out. Yeah. So we know the technologies work. We're trying to help uh, the way that we're deploying, at least in our case, well, how we're deploying our, our prototypes has more to do with not, you know, demonstrating the technology works, but demonstrating the economics and the mall around why you should be scaled. So if we can show, you know, if, if in a few months, the objective is to show that larger campuses that can't wait for hydrogen to be blended into pipelines or, you know, so a campus, a hospital, uh, places that want to have green energy, want to have, you know, affordable, renewable, reliable power uh, and have location be able to put in a tank for, say, ammonia storage, there'll be great applications and we can help further, you know, the scaling of our fuel cells here. That's really what it's about. It's about helping drive greater adoption of, of hydrogen and fuel cells in North America. And we're, you know, there's a lot of tricks in our bag to make sure that we help convince markets and customers and even governments to change policies to enable this even quicker. What's your sense of what, what's your sense of the anticipation uh, of the success of this joint venture in terms of, because I know you, Frank, you're a sales guy first, your mark, your business, de business development guy first. I'm assuming you've already gone out to George Calm and ABC and XYZ and said, "Hey, you know, what's your appetite if I can make this work?" 
for you to for you to you know adopt yeah, i mean you don't want to put the cart ahead of the horse but it's it's very simple if the pro forma works and you can demonstrate look it's one thing if we're trying to sell someone something that no one's ever seen before and no one even uses or buys today everyone's buying energy today all we need to do is demonstrate that the pro forma of the packages we're putting together are more economic than what currently exists as your alternative then we know people will, will buy it and will deploy it and, and integrate it. That's not the difficult part. It's getting people to change their mindset of, well, how do you, you know, what type of backup generator would you put in? What type of system? It's having them understand that there's a great pro forma attached to this, there's a great net present value return on investment on this um, and, and how easy it is to, to make it happen. So uh, it's really educating the marketplace um, and, and the, different decision makers, the engineering firms, uh, the utilities to understand this is a viable solution. And, and that's absolutely what we're going to do. Um, and to go along with this, because look, anytime you go through creating new source of power like this, uh, you need financing and you announced access to $4 million in convertible debt financing. How, how especially in this day and age, this, this year, 2022, where the biggest companies in the world are finding it difficult to raise, you know, to get access to funding, let alone small caps. How key was that uh, for you in order to give you comfort in the show, this comfort that you can actually. It's absolutely key. Our investors are and our, a lot of our lead investors really believe in this business and they continue to support it, uh, which is, you know, obviously, obviously as a CEO of it, it's a great feeling to know the people who are behind it are really behind it, even financially. Um so that, that was critical. That's a great message to send. And I think beyond that, and we've talked about this last time, we have a $50 million pipeline of power projects. Those power projects are going to require senior debt on them, development capital. That's our money, whether it's equity, uh, you know, sub debt. We have a number of things we have to deploy for our growth. Um, and money is going to help with that. And having access to another $4 million of convertible debt financing is a way to give us more leverage, even in, in negotiating and sort of growing our, our grow our really growing our opportunities to deploy capital. Uh, so we're really excited to have that extra 4 million at our disposal. Um, in addition to, there's really other things we've already talked about, you know, flow through credits in Canada, the use of them to deploy in a lot of development projects. And, you know, when we look out in the coming weeks or, or so at the, the, you know, the, the next step, the next logical step in our fuel cell technology, we know we have a launch coming up uh, of our technology shortly. And that's de-risking the technology, it's done. Then we have a, what's the next step? Where are we going from, from we're deploying in these pilots, manufacturing, there's a number of components we'll continue to talk about to move it ahead. That's still gonna require more money and funds, but at a very de-risked level compared to where they were even a few months ago. So money is gonna make the world go round and we'll need more of it, but it's just how are we doing it that's really cost effective for how we raise it and really effective for the investors to understand, you know, they're getting a $50 million pipeline and they're getting access to a longer term investment horizon uh, with, with I call what I call the hockey stick. So um, 4 million goes a long way to supporting uh, our objective. Yeah, it seems like every time we talk, Frank, you're just putting together a stronger and stronger company. And by the way, we should, we'd be remiss if we quickly, quickly did mention the fact that you, since we, since we spoke, after we spoke, uh, you announced your Q3 and nice milestone, your first full quarter of revenue uh, in the company's history, $135,000. It's not the number that's important. It's the fact that your first full quarter uh, of revenue. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, we told the market, I started six months ago, we told the market uh, when we acquired these other power projects, it was about getting revenue in, increasing earnings in those projects to sort of balance out the fact that there's still going to be some cash required to grow our fuel cell business. But that's what we're trying to show the marketplace is that this, this uh, it's working. And the first full quarter in Q3 of, of revenue of our one operating asset demonstrates, okay, so, you know, put that out. We have a number of projects to continue to deploy um, over the coming year, years, and get to that 50 million deployed in capital and all the revenue that comes with that and the earnings. So we're on our way. But, and I said this last time, uh, developing those projects are key and they're critical and they come with say the better returns versus just acquiring. Uh, but absolutely everything's on the table and we're looking at acquisitions. Everything that gets us our revenue in and our earnings up and to offset our burn as fast as we can. And we're on that path right now. Well, you've got a great, you know, you've got the company perfectly set up with a current, you know, operation, 
near-term operations that you can just reach and then the long-term hockey stick. And as always, thank you for joining us today, Frank. Congratulations on this JV. Looking forward to hearing how the how the pilots go, but it seems like there's a high level of confidence. And if all goes well, I hope by next summer I'll be able to heat my pool using your fuel cells <laughs> and, and this ammonia. Absolutely, Jerry. Absolutely. That, Thanks, Jerry. Bring those costs down. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Thank you. For everybody at home, you've been watching or if you listen to my podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform, to Frank Carnavalli, CEO of Alkaline Fuel Cell Power, trades in Canada under PWWR. And for our friends in the US, as you can see over Frank's shoulder, ALKFF, get to the profile page in Agoracom, do your due diligence. You know this is coming, so you might as well be at the forefront of it. Just don't say 12 months from now, we didn't tell you so. We didn't tell you about Alkaline Fuel Cell Power. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.